Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar, and apologies for the delay. I got locked out of Zoom, um, so I wasn't able to. It, it gave me a delay of 30 minutes, and we just got the UK data come in. And bear with me. Go. And you can see that here, uh, it's come in, uh, mortgage lending came in at 3.9 billion, uh, actually 4.05, so it came in better than expected. And I'm not sure why my squawk isn't working. Hang on a moment. Uh, but anyway, you can see that the data came in. And uh, before that, we actually got uh, employment numbers come out, um, German employment. And that actually came in a little bit stronger as far as, uh, and I stronger in the sense that they lost more than expected. We're going to touch on that, but uh, just to go on quickly, uh, look over some things here um, uh, on this German employment number. And then, of course, we just got the UK data. Now, we do get CPI. Uh, that's going to be out. And that's going to be German CPI at 8 a.m. Eastern. And then we get ISM uh, New York Index at 945 Eastern. Of course, this is showing at Central Time. I'm in Central Time. Um, construction is 10 a.m. Eastern. ISM Manufacturing PMI. And we'll go move these out of the way. And we are seeing, uh, we are seeing the cable. Uh, continue to come under pressure. We've got some support here coming in at 3082. <clears throat> and same with the euro here. This is a key area for the euro also. Coming in right there, you can see that 1145 uh, right there. If uh, And the key thing is we really need to go on and, and um, close above and defend this 1160, 1170 area here. I'm not 60, but actually 1170 on a daily close. So we'll see how we're holding up, but we are under a little bit of pressure coming in right now with the Euro. Um, let's go on and um, obviously the big news overnight uh, was uh, uh, the uh, the US uh, uh, attack, um, kill, uh, taking out the uh, Iranian general Salami. Uh, obviously that's caused a Big movement, uh, you know, in the spoos. Spoos are currently trading at 31, 32.24, so they've come off uh, 30 handles. And we've got 10-year notes uh, on their highs, and crude oil is at 63.35, and gold is on its highs at 50, 50 uh, and a half. We do have some resistance at 50, 52 on the DS gold, but that's where we stand right now. Um, let's just go on and quickly go and touch on the news here. Bear with me. So, and this, this, this story came out right before the, or it came out actually a little bit after the, um, uh, the big melee, but uh, in regards to the Australian dollar, now you can see here, we've continued to weaken lower. Australian dollar fades away and bushfires add to the economic unease. The Australian and New Zealand dollars faded further away 
from five-month highs on Friday. Speculators took profits on recent gains, while weeks of wildfire disruptions threatened to weigh on the Australian economy. Both also took a hit on the safe haven yen when the Pentagon confirmed the U.S. Air Forces had killed a senior Iranian military official at Baghdad Airport. The failure to clear a July high uh, of 70.82 left it vulnerable to a pullback to the 69.30, and right now we're at 69.42 here. Um, bonds benefited from souring and risk sentiment, and with Australian three-year bond futures firming six ticks to 99.18. Domestic events were also favoring debt as raging bushfires across Australia's most Popular states darkened the national mood and disrupted the lucrative tourist trade at the height of the summer season. The seemingly never-ending Australian bushfire disaster is another drag on the economy, warned Shane uh, Oliver. Increasing risk is that because they are so widespread and going on for so long, they will tend to be a noticeable negative disruption to economic activity and will increase uh, increasingly weigh on the national psyche, further depressing consumer spending. Household consumption had already been the weakest sector of the economy last year as the sluggish wage growth weighed on confidence. This is, and it goes, not even three rate cuts from the RBA uh, ran of tax rebates as a revival in home prices had been able to set, resuscitate retails, retail sales. And this one, my thoughts is that we probably can see the RBA going in and um, potentially cut again sooner because these Australian brush fires have been going on. Actually, it's been in a drought for three years, so it continues to worsen here. So certainly, I think you have to take that into account. And as much as we had rallied already here in the Aussie, it's certainly open to a pullback. And we'll take a look here with the dollar and said that, and let's go back here. And this actually, the story had posted right after, not too long after, probably about a couple hours after the news story, but uh, it says the dollar stumbles to a non-week low. Well, actually, we've, we've really made a run up here. And we had actually a pretty decent run. So now, and that coincided with the euro uh, coming down here to 11, I think it was 11.43, uh, 11.42. Uh, I posted that in the chat room. Uh, and we'll get to that. I was looking for support at 11.45. You can see as we're kind of coming off of that at the moment. Um, says the dollar stumbles to a non-week low against the safe haven yen, uh, Japanese yen. And you can see here with the Japanese yen, we've actually come into um, our bias chart support, which is going to be, we, if you saw the, my Asian analysis was 7.78. And we've been as low as, looks like 7.90, I guess, or maybe a little bit lower, 7.89. But um, let's go on and get into that. Japanese yen led other safe haven asset, as, uh, assets higher on Friday after airstrikes on Baghdad Airport killed a senior Iranian military official. U.S. Treasury bonds and gold rallied after Iraqi militia spokesman told Reuters that Iranian Major General Qasem Soleimani and Iraqi militia commander Abu Mande Mahans were killed in an attack. U.S. officials told uh, Reuters that strikes have been carried out against two targets linked to Iran and Baghdad, and oil prices jumped two dollars a barrel. Actually, with oil prices right now, we're actually at sixty-three thirty-three. The high overnight was sixty-three eighty-four. So we're not that. We're fifty cents away, and that seems like a long, uh, quite a ways, but not really when you look at. Uh, we before we took off, we were probably what around sixty-one and a quarter, and they rallied up, you know. Uh, pretty decent amount, about $2 and about $2 and 60 cents or so at the time. The dollar eased uh, to 108.7 yen, but we're looking like, say, we've been as low as, I think, about 789-ish uh, or so. So, uh, But anyway, it says the dollar eased following the news, breaching several layers of chart support and reaching its lowest in early November. The euro also dipped to a three-week low at uh, 120.78 versus the yen. The yen is often used as a safe harbor during times of global tensions, given Japan's status as the world's largest creditors nation. Holiday meant uh, cash treasuries were not trading, but treasury bond futures gained seven ticks on the news, implying a drop in U.S. yields. And a quick blurb in regards to that uh, German data. It says German employment uh, 
unemployment rises more than expected in December. That certainly weighed here on what we were seeing in this slide in the euro, uh, which is already sliding down. Um, we need to go and hold this area here, 11.45. German unemployment rose more than expected in December. Data showed on Friday, adding to signs that weakness in the manufacturing sector is hurting the labor market in Europe's biggest economy. Data from the Federal Labor Office shows number of people out of work rose by 8,000 to 2.279 million in seasonally adjusted terms. That compared with Reuters consensus forecast of a rise of only 2,000. And lastly, I do want to uh, touch on this. Um, Year's on bond yields down as geopolitical tensions unnerved the market. Uh, Germany's 10-year bond yield uh, fell to a two-week low on Friday from a seven-month highs after U.S. airstrikes killed a top Iranian commander. World st uh, stocks slipped. Uh, oil prices soared in safe haven absence, such as the Swiss franc and the U.S. Treasuries rallied as U.S. airstrikes in Iraq unnerved investors. Markets still remain quite thin after the holidays, but even in regular session, we would have seen a similar reaction, said Christian Link. Yields on German bonds regarded as one of the safe haven assets in the world were sharply lower across the curve. The 10-year boon uh, fell five basis points to two-week left minus 2.48. So with that, we're going to move on to the analysis. Uh, let me get rid of this. So let's go and move on to the um, euro. So this is the euro paired back towards eleven uh, towards the eleven seventy, which is key daily support. We'll take a look at this. You can see the significance of this eleven seventy coming in right there. So the euro paired back towards the 1170 daily support. Additional intraday support comes in at 1145. A daily close below 1170 opens the door for initial move to 1118. Resistance is 1207. Um, obviously, we we saw some big moves overnight. Uh, now, actually, when we saw those moves, um, I was watching in Asia. We didn't see that much of a reaction for the dollar. I mean, I thought that was really a concern here. Uh, and really opens the door. Now, right now, like I said, the momentum is pushing lower. We also got um, the German uh, unemployment, which came in higher than expected. So that's keeping the pressure on the euro. And it's going to be concerning if we're not able to uh, hold this 11, uh, you know, hold this 1170 on a daily close. It's going to be very, very concerning. Um, let's go and push in here. There's some additional support you can see right here. And right there's where we're coming in. I could say that 1145-ish. We need to go and really establish this level. Um, potentially, I think we can bounce back up here. Uh, if you're looking on, on a day trade basis, the resistance now would come in at 1165, 1166. So I think we should be able to bounce from here, apply a little bit of short covering. Dollar looks at like it might be a little bit stretched, but we really need to close above 1170. So if you're picking it up down here, you can um, you can look to go on and uh, lay off if you if you're trying, just trying to short trade it, uh, short term traded, uh, you'd be looking at 1160 and then 1165 here, but it's really important that we uh, uh, are able to close above 1170. So if anyone had been short or anybody looking to pick up bargains, this is a good area right here. And then on the bounce back, um, should be able to bounce back reasonably. You'd be looking for 15 pips and then an additional uh, five beyond that. And then uh, but if you're only day trading it, but we really need to close above 1170 here. Uh, let's go and move into the cable. And let's go in. Didn't even mark up the uh, bias chart, so hang on. 
so if we do take a dip down here, the next key level is going to be 1130. So we're going to have 1130 down here for support. We're at support now. Um, let me make sure, stick with what we had. 1145.30. There we go. And um, resistance now is going to be... I don't want to put just 1173, so resistance would come in at 1191. Might be a bit of a stretch here. Right there, 1185. Still remains bullish, but it's not going to be good if we close below 1170. Let's go move into the cable. So it says cable finished a day, weaker for the day, but managed to close above the support level of 3107. Resistance is 3195 with intraday support at 3082. Now we're actually pressing below the 3082 right now at the at the meantime. In the meantime, let's go and take a look at it on a two hour chart, but that was our support level here. You can see here at 3082. If we push beyond that, obviously we're seeing the dollar once again reassert itself a little bit here. Let's take a look. 3072 coming in right there at 3072. So we're going to we're going to go with 3072 for the bias chart support. And on the upside right there 3128 And let's go move into the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie has turned weaker from the resistance level of 70.27, and we'll look at that on the daily. There we go. The LC is turning weaker from the resistance level of 70.27, which was confluencing with 70.32 to 50% of 66.91 to 73.94. The pair is open to a move to 69.26 with intraday resistance is 70.09. So we're looking for a potentially a move to 69.26. And you can see that coming right there. You see that right there coming across from here. So that's going to be our bias chart uh, support today, 69.26. And let's take a look for resistance. Right there, 
it might even be a stretch considering how much how far we've already rallied um and the market probably be looking to sell any kind of rallies back up here so i'm going to go with 69, 68, 69, 68. And let's go move into the Kiwi. See, now it says the Kiwi looks ripe for a reasonable pullback after the past stellar three weeks. Initial support level will be 66.34, followed by 65.93, with resistance at 67.11. Well, we're, we're not that far away. We're almost there at 66.34. And remember how important 67.34 was uh, right there. Uh, right there, remember that? 67.34. So, Actually, we're looking for a move down here, and it's going to be 66.34, 100 pips away from that where that area was. They had some trouble. So looking for And just like, I and mean, look at this phenomenal run we've had. Resistance should be linking, okay, it's going to come in up here to 88, but I'm not even sure we can even make it up that high. That might be a stretch, but uh, going to be 66.88. Uh, if we can give a bounce back. Right. Look at it this way. That would be, I mean, any moves towards that area, they're going to be looking to sell. So it's going to be 66.88. Still remains bullish. And let's go move into the dollar CAD. So it says the dollar cat is in route to its target of 2902. Remember, we, we uh, had that in place at the beginning of the week. We thought that the market would make a move down. Uh, I think I wasn't sure it was going to make it by this Friday. Uh, I thought we'd kind of teeter around here, and our overall target would be 2902. Uh, we remember we started out with some support at 3052. We thought this 3029 would, would hold. It actually gave way and really opened the door, and we made that push. Uh, but that's the overall target is 2902. In the meantime, though, it says support level ahead is going to be 2933. So that'll be our support here. Yesterday's support coming today was 2956. So not bad. It held the 2950 area. And resistance is going to be. 3029. Uh, we're pretty oversold, so if we do get a bounce, we're looking, you know, for this area right here, 3029 to go in. I don't want to say cap it, but uh, people are looking to go on and get that come back in at that area. So let's go with 3029. And obviously it remains bearish. Let's go move into the peso. Now, we have seen the peso bounce. Uh, we actually saw this bounce uh, right after the um, the big melee last night. We were I was actually doing some analysis, and 
the pair was pretty much still sitting rather quiet right down here. And then shortly after that, it started moving up higher and I was no, notating in the room. Or at least I mentioned, hey, look, it's on a move. At the time, it was traded 1887 and it just sat there for the longest time after it already bounced up. And now we've made this move up here. Uh, when I did the analysis, um, I put on here the pace was popping after the Iranian news resistance is 1892. Well, we've already blasted by that. So we're really actually going to be looking for resistance coming in right there at 1897, 1897, which we're, which we're kind of bouncing at right now. So we're going to go with this resistance here at 1897 on the peso. At 1898, um, on the 30 minute, we had the 97. We'll, still, we'll just go with the 97 where we're at right now. They may be able to bounce up here, but we'll call it the 1897. And support in the meantime is going to be 1892 at this point. <clears throat> and let's go move into the dollar yen and you can see the euro continue to weaken and uh here and like i said uh close below 1170 is not going to be good we might see the market kind of stabilize here and maybe try and push back up here but this is not going to be good if we close below 1170 on a daily let's go on and move into the um Dollar yen. So the dollar yen continues to thumb its nose to equity bulls following its own path. Immediate support is seven seventy eight. Well. Actually, I did this analysis right before the um, the whole thing was happening, and we were still a little bit weaker, but then obviously we continued to push lower. So we're looking for 778. And on the upside, any bounce here is going to be right there at 839. Let's take a look on a two-hour chart see if we get something a little bit closer there. Right there, 834. So it's going to be 834 in the short haul. And 778 on the downside. With that, we'll move into the cash dollar index. Well, we're getting a bounce off of this um, this whole thing with the um, the geopolitical um, issue. Now, we didn't. The odd thing is, we didn't see that when the actual was ha when actually was happening. We did not see this um, moving the dollar. We're starting to see that right now. Uh, a bit of a very big de delayed reaction uh, coming in. Let's take a look on the two hour chart. So we're going to go right there with that ninety seven oh seven ninety seven oh seven. Let's take a look on the daily.
We'll go with that, 9707. And for support, it's going to be right there, ninety six seventy five, ninety six seventy five. And with that, we'll go and move into the cross rates. Now, we have seen the QEN back down now. I don't want to say back down, but I mean pair back. You can see here we had this... Um, unbelievable trend line here. I mean, we had had a fabulous run over the last three and a half weeks. We've gone and paired back. Obviously, the strengthening of the yen has had its own impact here. We're seeing that pushed here a little bit to the level. Support right now is going to come in right there. You see that? 71.82. So we're not that far away, but it's going to be resistance let's go and take a closer look obviously in the two hour we have a little bit of an inverted hammer for at the moment resistance is going to come in right there 72 21 for right now 72 21. Let's go move into the euro again. <clears throat> We've really seen this come off quite a bit. Uh, obviously, the euro has been weakening, and then on top of that, the euro, the yen was strengthening. Um, we've had a pretty good run already so far, so I'm going to say support's going to come in right there. 2031, 2031, and actually the low so far has been, well, right there, 2031. You can see it coming across there. You see that? there so yeah that's right there where the low is i think that's a good area right there for pickup 2031 and on the upside Right there, 2076, 2076. Now let's go move on to the Euro odd. This has been hanging around these lows here, and but it's held up relatively well. We talked about this yesterday when we were kind of make the stand, and the, we were looking for the Aussie already to pull back. So we have fifty nine seventy two um, right there. So 
we're going to go with that. We can probably do a little bit better than that, to be honest with you. I think we're starting to break up with this Aussie being weaker. So we're going to go with 6009, actually 6001 as support now as we break higher. And resistance. Sixty-one oh two. Let's take a look on the two hour. Yeah, right there. Sixty-one oh four. Sixty-one oh four for resistance. And let's go and move on to the Euro Kiwi. We've had a pretty good confluence here. And remember, the Kiwi looks open to still pulling back. So we're actually going to, and you can see we're moving higher. We even had this inverted hammer yesterday see that so i'm actually going to put the supports going to come in right there as we broke above this area here i think market they'd be looking to buy this back and that could be a risk level which is going to be right there 66.78 already started moving away from that quite quickly and on the upside And this market is very well overdone. So on the upside, it's going to be right there, Let's go move into the RCN. Well, we've already started obviously pairing back with the strength of the yen, although that's gone a pretty good move already so far, but the Aussie continues to weaken. So we're gonna actually get make a move for the 74.73 for support. And take a look at the upside, which I think is going to be rather limited. Will be a bounce to 75.50. Now we can still see a bounce that may not be as overboard over, uh, as you may think, because uh, the yen's pretty well um, stretched on the buy side. So if we do see a pair back, that may kind of even out here and potentially at least you know the, what they'd be looking at 75. Uh, once again, like I said, right there. 7550. And let's go on with the guppy. It's already a pretty good little pair back here, um, although the, the cable, the sterling continues to weaken. So, got to know what the risk level is. And it's that's going to be solid support right there is 40.74. And on the upside, I 
And the Euro continues to weaken. Now it's 11.35. Um, we did have our secondary support, 11.30. Um, it's pretty well overdone. 42.05 may be... You see a bit of a stretch here. Let's go right there with And let's go move into the sturdy nod. This to me seems like it would be marking time, but the resistance is going to be right there. 88.85 on the upside. Down on the downside. Eighty seven ninety one. There we go. You can see the dollars continue to move higher, but we do have remember we had ninety seven oh seven, so uh, and our secondary support here on the euro was eleven thirty. <clears throat> So right up in here, probably where we find some support in here. We'll have to see. Um, cable at 3078 below. Uh, we got 3072, but we've already been as low as what 3068. 3068. So we'll see if we can't make a little bit of a stand here. Dollar still trying to hold up on its bid here. Uh, dollar yen at 812. And dollar peso just pressing up here against this 1898 here. Actually, 1897 is our resistance. And dollar cad just trying to work a bit higher. We do have gold at 1549. We mentioned that 1552 uh, and a half is uh, some resistance. 6346 on the crude. And spooze at 3224. So that's what we have for today. We'll see you in the chat room. And um, thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.